So let's talk a little bit about day of stuff. So uh, okay, obviously with Japanese shows, um, there is no Dawn Patrol tickets are ordered right. or numbered. So you show up, you get an opportunity to buy merch outside the venue before you go in, which I think is an amazing way to do things. And yeah. then they line you up to take you in. Um, yeah. Do you prefer the lineup, the Dawn Patrol stuff, or do you like this more orderly, efficient Japanese style? Um, man, it's, it's only good if you have a good number, you know, right. Cause, um, so my experience at Shibuya line cube, I went to both nights. Uh, so that was what February 13th and February 14th. Yeah. That second night was, uh, Valentine's the first night I got, I was pretty close up to Misa side. I mean, it's a sign and I didn't, I don't think I ended up even switching with anyone. I just happened to like be lucky to get that side and be pretty close up. Second night, I was like way back in the parking lot um, on Konami's side. So I didn't hate that experience because it gave me a perspective of the, the whole show with like all the projections and lights and lasers and why they chose to go that obnoxious with their outfits in that iteration. Uh, because of fit and they were going for bigger shows um so yeah i mean it's really the look of the draw really i mean part of the the beauty and i think the appeal of dawn patrol as tired as you are like i mean it was my first opportunity to hang out with you guys hmm. you know and so it's kind of it's a little bit more special to me than maybe to other people who have done that because this is my opportunity to meet you, Chester, Brian, you know, I'd seen Mike before, but I mean, it's the first time in four years since we've known each other that we're actually meeting. So, I mean, that, it's hard to say, because that was really special. Would I want to do that every single damn show? <laughs> God, I, I I can't even imagine doing that. Um, And in Japan, I think uh, maybe... My brain just uh it, it goes to the the asian the asian ego that just says ah i mean yes this is the way to do it let's line up let's be proper and let's just follow the rules um it it, it shifts the it shifts your attitude when you're there because i feel like the dawn patrol you're like all right, we're up in front. Yes, we did it. Like we did it. And you know, like, all right, we're going to go in and we're going to be right there. Like, you know, you're going to be right there at the rails. Whereas in Japan, you just, you just go, okay. I mean, I am where I am and let's just enjoy it for what it is. All right. You know? So you, you did a couple of live streams from the outside and I know you talked to a bunch of different fans. Um, <clears throat> like I saw, you know, the usual suspects, obviously Mike was there. Owen was there. Um, Joe Luna was bumping around out there, and uh, and I saw Banana Man, Alex, Alex, Alexis. I don't, I'm not quite yeah. sure how to pronounce that J. <laughs> just say Alex. Just say Alex. I don't know. Yeah, that works. Uh, did, you did you talk to him at all a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I interviewed him, and um, we had been we had been communicating um, through Twitter because. I guess he felt that I was a good person to talk to as far as how to contact the venue, um, how to go about passing or even doing towels in the first place. Mm -hmm. Cause he was inspired by what the U S tour, the things that, you know, you guys had done. So we had interacted that way um, for probably at least uh, a month before arriving. And then when I met him, we talked a little bit, nothing too deep. Um, mm -hmm. It, it was kind of hard because, you know, I I couldn't just be a fan, you know, as as being a, a part of MNN, you got to look for opportunities and, you know, see what what can happen. And um, so it would but it, it was just talking to certain people you know, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And then even talking to some Japanese fans a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So I, I felt, I felt kind of torn. Um, uh, Cause it is, it's, it's really fun. It's, 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 it's genuinely fun for me to, 
talk to all these people and to get to know them. Like I, I kind of love that aspect of the fandom and in general, just getting to know people and like, you know, their thoughts on things. And especially with bandmate, it's that much more exciting because, you know, we can relate so much. So yeah. I, can, I can't remember if you said this either maybe in one of our chats or if it was in one of your interview videos, but mm. can you say there was like some like Japanese fans who recognized you from this? Oh, yeah. Um, so there was uh, a princess, a, Jap a Japanese princess, a Hime, Hime-sama. <laughs> and she was actually talking to some other people and I noticed her sort of shyly sort of wave at me and I didn't know who she was. And I thought, am I supposed to? Uh, and then I guess after, I, I don't exactly remember the, the sequence, but I think other uh, overseas fans were like, oh, go, go talk to him. And so <laughs> she was like, oh, hi, like, uh, you know, I watch MNN and we started talking. So she is Japanese, but she speaks some English and she's pretty good. So uh, like that happened and then like sporadically um, like one guy from Taiwan um, one guy from somewhere else which I where I can't remember maybe it was Hong Kong or Singapore and then another Japanese fan which kind of sh <laughs> it shocked me the most and I realized it shocked me the most because I was doing the live stream and the minute I heard him say oh Pirorim <laughs> I was like, you can't see my face. It's, it's all on the fans. But I'm saying, um, oh, <laughs> which is like, oh, do you know me? Do you know me? Do you know me? <laughs> and I sound like an idiot, but... Um, yeah, so that was really cool. You know, I think we kind of see this as more of an overseas fans um, focused channel. But to know that we have Japanese fans watching this and other uh, overseas fans that aren't Western, I think that's really exciting. Oh, definitely. No, that, that, that's very, that's very cool. So, yeah. I thank think you to you... everybody who watches us around the world. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, if you were there, oh, SJ, oh, Scott, oh, uh, Nix, Nix. <laughs> Maybe so, someday. Hopefully someday. Yeah. I mean, is there any time at all this year that you can swing on by? Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, the, the first time I go to Japan, it is going to have to be a full family trip. There's just no way around that. And mm. Uh, that's just going to require, you know, probably because I can live out of a backpack for a week mm. and happy to flop wherever I can flop. But if I take the whole family, I got to do it right. So it's going to be like exponentially more expensive, but I'll get it done. <laughs> I want to take the family. And then I certainly want to do a, a, a couple of shows and then do some club crawling like you did with Mike. That's, that's one thing I really want to do. Yeah, no, you... Uh, you you would really appreciate that experience, no question. Absolutely would. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> all right. So we've done our we've done our side gigs. We've done our hanging out hanging out in front, and talking to folks. Mm -hmm. We're now in the venue. And I remember you had this kind of dilemma of like, there's a couple of the tickets available to me. Who should I go with? If I I may roll the dice and get this ticket, but then do right. I do the bird in a hand? Or do I do the two in the bush? <laughs> right. Um, well, so, you know, Michael uh, and you as well, like I remember during our interview, you were like, oh, you're you're our guy in Japan. And for Mike, like I really am, like I'm his guy. In, well, I mean, he has, actually, he has a few guys in Japan. Why are you like that, Michael? Why can't you be monogamous? <laughs> <laughs> so uh but he had asked me to buy a couple of tickets for him um one for me and then one for him and i think there were various other people he had asked to do that with uh but the tickets that i had gotten were pretty good like they were uh in front of konami not like the orchestra pit like not right up in front but in that section 
which ended up going to Richard Hogan, I believe, and Derek Stevenson, if I'm not mistaken. I think, yeah, I think Mike gave those tickets to them. Um, so yeah, eventually I did go with, um, uh, he will remain unnamed for, uh, for reasons, but he had told me that he had two tickets um, in the XA area. And if you've looked at the seating chart or you can look at the seating chart, or it'll go up on this <laughs> on this video. Um, it is directly in front of Misa, and I I just thought, oh, what? Because <laughs> a part of me, the thing is, a part of me did want to see a little bit more of the spectacle aspect of the show, and then the other part was, but you know, it's 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 Misa, right? Um, and that sounds for some people like an obvious choice. Uh, but I think because of my experience at Shibuya Line Cube and what that gave me a perspective of. So it did definitely affect uh, my experience of the show. Uh, but I did end up choosing to be up in front. And the funny thing is that there are four rows in that front section. And the two of us had mistakenly thought that we were in the back two seats directly in front of Misa. And then later two Japanese men came and said, oh, th these are our seats. And we go, oh, really? And then we checked to go, oh, we're actually directly right in the front row, like in the front row on wow. the rails. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I got a very, a lot of good, good glimpses of uh, Misa's new Jaguar, Jaguar base. Um, you know, and then her uh, her good old tobacco, uh, black smoker, black cloud, um, and and Misa. So, <laughs> you know, that's I, I can't imagine stumbling in the front row seats at an eight thousand seat venue. Like, hey, get out of my bad seats and go to your amazing seats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it really was like, oh, then where are we? Oh, dude, bro, yo, we're we're like right in the front. <laughs> These are our seats. <laughs> but I, I mean, here's the thing, though, is that, yeah, I was right there. But I mean, this is maybe it's me. Other people might have enjoyed themselves just as much, just as equally. But for me, I mean, uh, a live show isn't just the band playing, but the experience of being with the other fans. Hmm. Um, you know, and for, for me, uh, that's why LA was such a special experience having you on my side, Brian over there and like everyone else, um, uh, being so pumped and excited and just, there's a sense of like, yeah, we're in this together, you know, and if I'm being honest, uh, you know, it was, it was great. And I was glad I was up there, but you know, the guy next to me, he had binoculars, because I guess he wanted to, because he wanted to see. I guess maybe he was a fan of Konami's, or maybe you know Akane. <laughs> and I just thought, dude, why do you have? An... So he wasn't the most enthusiastic. You know, he'd have his hand doing this, and then he'd be like, <laughs> "I have this mental image of that guy looking at his binoculars, and Konami looking back at him doing this." <laughs> <laughs> You know, because I I wasn't uh, on that side. So I think even if I caught a glimpse of her doing that at that point, it wasn't until I watched the show and I was like, <laughs> it's just her mouth. That's just that. Oh, uh... uh -huh. <laughs> we uh, all of us watching that on the live stream died We're like, oh, my God. LOL. Yeah, that's. Minshew being Minshew, that was really, really funny. And yeah. you make the point of not being able to see that live. So, I'm, and I'm, mm. this is going to annoy some people, but I've never not mm. seen Bandmade from the front row. Every time I've seen them, it's always been on the rail because I've always gotten there super early and I've, and I've always been in front of me. So I don't right, know what right. it's like to be in front of Konami. I don't know what it's like for their back. So, if I get yeah. an opportunity to do multiple shows uh, here in the US tour, 
Mm. I would love to have like something in the balcony where I can soak in the entire thing and just mm. experience as it. I love the front row. Absolutely love the front row and the energy from there. But I think right, at right. least once I want to get that live feeling from a place where I can see the entire thing as it happens. Right. Yeah. See, that's the interesting thing is that I've only ever been to, well, this is the third time I've seen bandmade where there was seating. You know, every other time you have a number, but it's not an, it's not a seat number. That's just the sequence of when you go in. Right. So, you know, the first time was they had a special acoustic and talk and there was a seating uh, with the number. And again, I, I do tend to actually luck out to be seated in front of Misa. <laughs> so I was seated not too far back. Actually, it, was, it wasn't it was too bad. It was pretty close up, um, like on Misa's side. And then the other time there was seating was at Shibuya. Again, first time was up close uh, towards Misa. Other time was way back, like in the bleachers. And then this time, which I, it is the best um, seat I've ever had, like with actual seats. But everything else, I've always either been closer up to Misa or a little bit back from Misa or further back from Misa or further mm -hmm. back from Misa. So that's all I know. Right. And even when I tell myself, okay, you've seen, you've seen the show from Misa side enough. Why don't you go over to Konami side or go in front of Psyche? And even when I walk in, I, I end up, <laughs> I don't know. My, my body just says, no, Misa. <laughs> So uh, same thing, I would like to, and I've become a little bit more enamored with Psyche's performance um, and her vocals too. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, if I can, I don't know, I'm I'm such a, a creature of habit, but if if I'm physically able to push my body, I would like to be somewhere around Psyche and Konami just to experience that. Right, I gotcha, 100%. Yeah. Okay. We're in our front row seats. The show's starting. Um, yeah. What is the, and I know we're still masked up in here. We're allowed to cheer and kind of yay a little bit, but we're still wearing yeah. masks. So what's that energy like with 8,000 now for the first the biggest show they've ever played? Uh, it's, it's very vague. Um, <clears throat> and I don't, I don't work well with vague rules. Is it this way? Is it not this way? Mm. You know, and it. Um, I try to put myself wholeheartedly into it. But there is still there are still eggs like eggshells on the ground. And so I, I found myself trying to, you know, like scream and shout. But then I'm like, is it? you're so i'm so used to being in japan and just clapping and watching um but you know at the smaller clubs uh you know the, the previous days people were like hollering and like singing along and i thought oh that's okay kind of threw me off gave a little shout like Woo! and then <laughs> with this show with this show um Definitely at the very start, I thought, okay, I'm going to at least shout, like, when they're out, I'm going to at least, like, scream out, like, Misa, like, you know, Miku, like scream, their, like, scream their names. But I wasn't sure about the rest of the show, how much I would give. And, you know, in that size of venue, you can't check every single person. Right. So, um, but I do have to say the energy was mixed. Um, watching watching the show through the stream i actually felt more energy from like sort of the 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 edits the cuts and because the focus was on the girls but you know when you're there you're when you're in that venue you're thriving um not just off of the girls but the people around you and what sort of energy they're giving and it was mixed it was a very mixed response like some people like in some places were giving it all they had right. um like screaming random things when it was quiet. And then, you know, you have uh, Mr. Binoculars next to me. Um, yeah, so I just didn't know where I was exactly. I can't say it was the most comfortable setting for me. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, I did scream. I did shout. I did like head bang until I started getting a headache. 
Um, but I can't say I was I was all in. Yeah. All right. So let me pull this up. Let's talk set list a little bit. Okay. <laughs> 